On a sunny October day at Claggett Farm in Upper Marlboro, a crowd has gathered to witness rain. Well, sort of. This is a rain simulator designed to help demonstrate how different types of ground cover behave during a downpour. So on this simulator, the front jug, that's going to be the runoff. But today's faux rainstorm is just one small part of a three-day soil health training exercise put on for employees of the state's soil conservation districts. Soil conservation districts go all the way back to post-Dust Bowl time. Or the period in American history when a combination of drought and poor agricultural practices led to frequent powerful dust storms throughout the Southern Plains region. And our whole mission, of course, is still rural conservation, working on farms with farmers addressing soil erosion and water quality, nutrient management issues. Nationwide, there are about 3,000 locally-led soil conservation districts, and Steve Darcy is the district manager for this one, Prince George's County. He's also one of the architects of this event. If you stop training, you stop learning, you stop moving forward. So in the field of conservation, it's all about moving forward, and it's so exciting. That's why I've been doing this for 33 years. Of course, Steve didn't start out as district manager. I was hired as an entry-level engineer, and my job was to go out and work with farmers in the county. We would walk his or her farm, and we would look at issues, and then we would come up with a solution, what best management practice would best fix that problem. But then here's your updated uh, conservation plan map showing your roof runoff. Throughout his three plus decades on the job, Steve has walked a lot of farm fields here in Prince George's County, which might come as a surprise to those who view this area as a sprawling suburb of DC. Prince George's County is 499 square miles, which is just over 300,000 acres. Believe it or not, we still have 60,000 acres of farmland in the county. Including the 150 that make up Steve's farm, Edgewood Farm in Upper Marlboro. My family has been here since 1956. When I was a young boy, we had tobacco and a large herd of beef cattle. Today, the farm is horses and grain, corn, soybeans, wheat, those kind of, those kind of crops. Not to mention soil conservation practices, like this structure which keeps debris out of a drainage system designed to reduce erosion. I always tried to be a guinea pig. If I would learn something on the job or a new program, I would sign up for it, bring it to the farm, implement it, and then I can come out to your farm and tell you what works and what doesn't work. But even here, it's hard to ignore the county's status as one of the most highly developed parts of the state. 10 miles west is the nation's capital. 30 miles north is Baltimore, and within a 360-degree circle, we have urban development in less than a mile. And that means unique challenges for the local soil conservation district. Take, for example, the county's growing number of urban agriculture projects. We really wanted to get involved with the conservation aspect of that. For example, with new technologies, like this XRF analyzer, which uses X-rays to check soil for heavy metals like lead and arsenic. Things that would not be good for people to raise their food in. And things that are more often found in developed areas. But whether at the local community garden or on one of the county's many remaining farms. For Steve, conservation work is more than just a job. I really believe this is God's good earth. We're put here to be stewards of the land and the water and the air. And so it just is natural from a farmer's standpoint, old farm boy like myself, to be doing God's bidding, and that is to do conservation work. Hi, thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. If you like this story, leave us a comment. If you want to see more, check out our playlists. We've got videos of cute animals, big machines, delicious farm-to-table recipes, and more.